Here we go. What is going on, Cover One crew? Welcome back to the show. Hope everybody is good. Week two underway. Bills Mafia, baby. Roll up because we rolled those Miami Dolphins on Squish the Fish week. It was unreal. Buffalo absolutely took it to him. Prayers up to Tua, though. We saw him hit his head again. And uh, it, it was not a good scene. I mean, it's potential retirement's got to be in the discussions for a Tua, but we're not here for that. We're talking Boomer Bust week number two. Who can we trust on the boom predicting? Who's going to boom? Who's going to bust? You guys know the drill every single week. First on the board, let's talk these running backs. Derek King Henry taking on those Las Vegas Raiders. And I'm telling y'all right now, okay, even though Henry is coming off a boom game, it was on the lesser side of things on the boom game. Hearing Coach Harbaugh say things like, we didn't sign Her uh, Derrick Henry to give him 30-plus touches a week, then I got to say, what the hell did you bring him here for if you're not going to utilize him? I mean, what, to lift equipment bags to the bus? Like, what are you doing with King Henry? I mean, this is what he is. He's a volume runner. We know the MO for a King Henry throughout his entire NFL career. Beats down a defense and then kills them in the fourth quarter, especially with a team that is super run upside heavy like the Baltimore Ravens. Was a very uh, peculiar comment from Coach Harbaugh, but I fully expect the Ravens to buck the trend. Feed Henry on the regular this week, despite what the head coach does say. I think it's a little bit of semantics and coach speak to say the least, but I do think King Henry does get back on track, even though though he did boom on the lower end last week I full, because he got into that end zone. I fully expect the usage to be that much better in week number two versus these Las Vegas Raiders. Boom for volume upside this week for a King Henry. Josh Jacobs taking on those Indianapolis Colts. Okay, and the Packers, they witnessed a massive blow in Brazil last week. Jordan Love feeling no love for love right now. I mean, he was trying to extend a play. I mean, well, the clock was bleeding out as they were trying to come back in that contest. At least he avoided the catastrophic ACL tear, but it is a sprained MCL. Likely going to keep him out two to four weeks. If they do rush him back, I will be surprised. He is the franchise couple games without him. I mean, it's not going to hinder the entire season more than likely, but I will see how that does shake down. I mean, with that this week, we see, we should see massive rush attempts for these uh, Green Bay Packers. But with Malik Willis as a starter, they let go of the other kid that was from Penn State, Clifford. And I mean, Malik Willis, Willis does not know this offense at this point right now. Only been there for a couple weeks. So this has the makings to be dreadful. Fully stacked boxes on the regular from the defense. And I mean, while we do have to play Josh Jacobs every single week because of where we drafted him, the volume should be here, but be prepared for lower stakes stat showings because of Malik Willis and how poor this offense could move offensively. I'm calling a bust this week unless he does find his way into the end zone. We still got to start him, but it does suck because I do believe he's going to bust. J.K. Dobbins versus the Carolina Panthers coming off a massive boom game versus those Las Vegas Raiders scoring 21.4 points last week in the return. And like I told y'all all off season. If J.K.'s healthy, he's going to show that he's still a good back in this league. And, I mean, the Chargers going to keep the ground and pound. You know this. Under Coach Harbaugh, he ran the ball like a madman at Michigan Showcase. He's going to do the same thing here. I mean, basically curtailed a Justin Herbert's role just like he did with a J.J. McCarthy. I mean, they're going to run the ball. And I've been telling you all as well, Gus Edwards, he is not a lead running back. It's going to be a nice tandem approach because if you got uh, had Gus above a J.K. early on, I told you all we're going to be disappointed early. He's got to find his way into the end zone, uh, Gus Edwards, which could happen as well. But I got J.K. having back-to-back -back boom games to start the season. It is boom time for a J.K. Brian Robinson Jr. taking on these New York Giants. Okay, and with not much passing upside last week for these commies, rushing was the name of the game with a B-Rob, with a uh, Jaden Daniels rookie taking the lead in this matter, running the football extremely well. However, the commies, I mean, they got to open things up for this rookie passer, even though we didn't see much of the shots coming from a Jaden Daniels, and I think that's more on him than it was the offensive schemes. He's going to one read, and he's taking off, and that was, he's got to learn to protect himself. What is that, you know, somersault dive he does? He's got to learn how to fix that in a very big way. They need some more passing shots, so to not be so timid, but either way, I think the run game is here to stay in Washington. Even with Austin Eckler, you should get more uh, touches in the mix, but it was a pleasant and, uh, you know, great, su not surprise, but pleasant to see that B-Rob is a featured back in this offense because that ADP to value to ROI is unreal. Back to boom for a B-Rob. Start with confidence in this contest as well. Wide receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, it was not 
not a good show for him last week versus the Buffalo Bills taking on the LA Rams this week. And yes, we all know if you're on social media, the car the Cardinals Kyler Murray, I mean, he he didn't look at his superstar, young superstar rookie wide receiver and he was down the field. It was a big Roman free open, did not see him and it posed a lot of questions from the media to say, "Why didn't you see him?" He says, "You know, football's really fast. You can't see everybody from time to time." Then he goes on record saying, "It's not his job to force feed Marvin Harrison on the regular." I do not like it whatsoever. Even though Carlo, uh, Ky Kyler Murray, Murray did not see him down the field, don't come out and sit here and say that it's not your job. It is your job to force feed him, but Marvin Harrison's got to do a better job getting open, finding separation, giving windows for his quarterback as well. I mean, after a great first half versus the Buffalo Bills, they absolutely crumbled. Harrison needs to get at minimum eight targets in this contest, and I truly believe that it is coming. I'm calling a TD shot for a Marvin Harrison Jr. calling boom because they got to get him in the mix in a very big way, and I think they're going to do that again, or they're going to do that for the first time in his young career this week versus those L.A. Rams. Debo, Debo Samuel, like I said, and starts it last week. Fade and Ayuk start Debo and Kittle. Debo definitely repaid us. Now he's taking on those Minnesota Vikings. And I mean, even before we knew the CMC injury on Monday Night Football, like I said, Ayuk was the bench because he had not played or even practiced throughout training camp, and it's not a good look. Drop that pass in the end zone as well. Not very good. The Manning cast even had some words to say. But, I mean, to ease the pressure off of a CMC, maybe CMC does play this week. They're saying there's still a shot. We all believe it's a long shot for him to come back. So, once again, if it is no CMC, Debo is going to be Shani's boy wonder. Again, helping them in both the run game, the pass game, the yak ability, trying to move this offense down the field because they can utilize him very similarly like they do a Christian McCaffrey. So, volume on the upside. He will repay us. Debo is the man again to prove it and it is a boom for a Debo once again here in week two George Pickens taking on the Denver Broncos and yes I you guys know I'm a massive Pickens supporter but this week I'm gonna have to take some pause after seeing what I did see last week Justin Fields is likely to suit up once again in this contest got Pickens you know over the 10 point threshold last week which was good was not great but the floor again is very soft and I mean playing a uh, playing this a, a defense like the Denver Broncos I mean, it's Patrick Sertan. What are we going to say? I mean, he is one of the best, if not the best, defensive backs in the entire NFL, and he should be shadowing a George Pickens all day long, given the fact that there isn't a whole heaping of target and talent share, on, or tar talent for target share, I should say, on this offense at this point. Nobody's really stepping aside. They're not even looking at Pat Fryermuth at this point. I mean, we're going to see uh, Pat Sertan shadow George basically most of the game. I would be shocked if he does not. Outside of a TD saving his day, I'm calling a bust for a George Pickens this week. It does not look good matchup. And the way that these Pittsburgh Steelers definitely played it safe here in week one, I do foresee that happening once again. Lean on that defense, get the wins is how they're going to do it early on as they get the quarterback situation figured out. Tank Dell versus Chicago Bears. Okay, Texans, they rode in with the ground attack last week, like I mentioned, calling Mixon a boom player. And, I mean, he hit it massively on the head because, I mean, he was one of the best running backs in fantasy football last week. But this week, we should see a little bit more of C.J. Stroud moving the offense, looking a little bit more comfortable. Yes, we saw Stephon Diggs take two TDs. I think it's time, man. It's, it's going to be tough all season long to force feed all these pass catchers plus get a mix in in the mix on the run game. So I completely understand why a lot of y'all are going to be like, you know, skittish on starting a Tank Dell. But he is the ultimate mismatch taking on these Chicago Bears. The Bears defense did look good. Tank Dell's that ult ultimate mismatch. I mean, and then... The Bears, they basically etched the team to victory last week. I don't foresee that happening again this week. C.J. Stroud and company, they are too damn good, and I think the focus will be more on Nico and Diggs. So I do believe that the answer is going to be ringing the bell for Dell, and I mean risk-reward, boom, for a tank Dell this week. Tight ends, Evan Ingram. I mean, overall, tight end overall was an absolute bust last week. Only six tight ends hitting boom games, and Evan Ingram was an absolute disappointment. Used sparringly in the Jags' offense while they imploded on themselves, and they lost that contest. I just don't understand how they did that. But last week, this week, we should see T-Log get back to basics, baby. And, I mean, use your tight end more regularly. Use him a lot more with targets. Start moving this offense. Control some clock. Even if you get a lead, I don't understand why you can't hold the lead. Use your tight end 
tight end and be that team that you're going to move the football when you do have the lead. Bounce back is very possible with TD upside on track. It's a little bit of a gamble, but I'm going back to boom for an Evan Ingram. Dallas Goddard versus the Atlanta Falcons. And like I mentioned last week in start Sid, the Eagles, Saquon Barkley, baby. We saw it. he's going to control the situation. This is what they have been missing in Philly. No question. The full on elite running back like a Saquon and AJ Brown. Grown ass man and Smitty being the top two targets in this offense. Dallas Goddard's going to continue to have a role, no question. But I mean, it's going to be very much hit and miss all season long. Moving the chains, possible red zone upside. But that's going to be the MO, man. Facing a Falcons team that's got Bates and Simmons. Yes, they didn't look great last week overall as a team. But I'm still a huge supporter of what this uh, defense is moving in that direction. Locking up the standard for the Dirty Birds. Looking to rebound on the defensive side. I think Goddard is going to have another bust type of performance. I, I do not like Goddard this week. Luke, uh, Luke Scootmaker versus the New Orleans Saints. Dallas Cowboys. Scootmaker. What a name. You got to love that name. And I'm going out a little bit on a limb here, okay? This is a little bit big-time risk. But, I mean, if Jake Ferguson, he's been lost to this injury, I mean, he's got, what, a bone bruise, MCL sprain. And, I mean, if he if Jake does suit up, then this point is completely moot. Anyway, you move in that direction with Jake Ferguson. If Ferguson does sit, and I expect him to be sitting... I, I like Luke Schoon, uh, Schoonmaker quite a bit. I mean, the tight end, he's vastly underrated. And the Cowboys, what do they know what to do? They know how to draft and develop tight ends without question. If Schoonmaker does get the nod, he should see at minimum four to five targets this week with potential uh, red zone opportunity to assist a CD Lamb and help this run game kind of recreate the run with a tight end. They love their tight ends in Dallas. High risk, potential high reward. Boom for a Schoonmaker maker it is a big risk don't get me wrong but I do think if he is on the field there is a TD that could be coming his way and Chig Okon Okonkwo for the versus the New York Jets Tennessee Titans and I'm telling y'all, man, early on, uh, I mean, the Titans were impressive. What can you say? They showed they can compete. Will Levis was doing okay early on, moving that football, not, you know, making the stage too big for himself. But as the game wore on, it went sideways in a very big way. I mean, Levis was not playing well. Now you got an image of him holding his helmet on his knees. That's going to be a gift for the rest of his life, unfortunately. And Okonkwo, he was a benefactor last week, scored a touchdown, uplifted his numbers to tight end six. But, I mean, however, you got to understand, man, that is a one-off in this situation, especially facing a Jets defense that was absolutely embarrassed by the CMC-less San Francisco 49ers. Their Jets defense could not get it into gear last week, and I fully expect a massive rebound for the Jets. They're going to bring the absolute bum rush on a Will Levis, and Okonkwo should be locked up in a very big way. Fade him this week on a bust game for and Okonkwo, I do not like it. But there you have it. That is Boomer Bust week number two. Obviously, stay tuned on Saturday for Start Sit. I got you covered once again. We're going to go, man, start the season off on the right note, and we're going to go into the fantasy finals, win those trophies. That is the ultimate goal. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your thoughts, throw them in the comments, man. I'll definitely get back to y'all, but we'll see you next time. I am out. <laughs>